What's going on everybody in the Jason Nation, my name is Jason and welcome to another top 10 video this time, not a top 5 video. And in today's video we're going to be revisiting the Sinnoh region and talking about the top 10 possible Sinnoh Mega Evolutions that could happen if they were Diamond and Pearl remakes. Now just remember one thing in this video, it is all my opinion. So if you disagree with anything in this video, whether it be one of the Pokemon or several of the Pokemon in this list, Feel free to leave your own top 10 or top 5 in the comment section below and I'd love to see what some of you have to say about this whether or not you agree or disagree with my list and what you guys would personally like to see instead. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. I think we all want to see our other favorite legendaries get primal or mega evolutions. I mean after seeing the power of the amazing design of both Primal Groudon and Kyogre, even as well as Mega Rayquaza, I hope we can all agree that we need Mega Evolutions like this for most of the mascot legendaries like Zekrom and Reshiram, Ho-Oh and Lugia, etc etc. No? Just me? Are you, are you, are you sure? Oh. What did I dream, right? Come on now. Plus, what makes Diamond and Pearl Remakes uh, as well as uh, Dialga and Palkia just getting Primal Evolutions in general is that Primal Dialga actually exists in a previous Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. This leads me to believe that they have some kind of Primal or Mega Palkia design in mind for a potential 4th gen remake in the future. I shouldn't have to say much as to why these guys should all get a Mega. I mean, because it's pretty obvious that you can't make a Pokemon game and not give the starters a Mega <coughs> X and Y. But that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe a little bit, but uh, I mean, I think you guys know what I mean. Like, I feel like eventually they'll want to go back and explore with uh, Mega Evolutions for all the previous starters at some point. I feel like that is definitely deserved. Um, but I feel like if they're going to make a remake of personally one of the best games in the series, in my opinion, they should really give all the starters Mega Evolutions. I mean, think about how, uh, you know, badass a freaking Mega Empoleon would be. A giant solid steel penguin and not of the shady variety? I think so. So Bronzong, being another popular member of most Team Galactic Grunts teams, this Pokemon isn't actually all that bad competitively wise. He definitely has his kinks, but the main thing that I love about Bronzong is how much of a defensive monster this guy can be. And if you think about it, with this thing having both uh, 116 base stats in both defenses, and having a base 89 attack, this thing can seriously be like the next Ferrothorn, uh, except it just doesn't set up spikes and leech seed, but you know what I mean. Although you can run several different kinds of sets on Bronzor, I feel like, or sorry, excuse me, Bronzong, you are really able to basically wall any attack even if you're not running a bulky set. And Bronzong getting a Mega Evolution could even allow its base defense stats, bleh, excuse me, defense stats to rise about, you know, like 140 a piece. I think that would be pretty cool. And maybe even his base attack could be raised to like 100 and the rest could be raised by like 5 or 10 if they really wanted to. Doesn't really matter, just something like that to keep his defenses up and his attack up because that's what he's really good at. Uh, you know, and this Pokemon would definitely make a perfect balance of Brawn and more Brawn. <laughs> but I, I mean, you get the picture, you get the picture. Oh man, Spiritomb. This Pokemon is the ultimate devil to obtain. Believe it or not, a video game company actually made it so you have to go out and have friends to get this Pokemon. Literally, in order to obtain a Spiritomb in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you have to go to Route 209 right below Salation Town and have the odd keystone in your bag. Then you have to have met 32 different people in the underground secret base system that was like the I, like I said the secret base system back in fourth gen. 32 people, Game Freak. Hello? Do you really think we have friends? Come on now. And also, you only get it at level 25. Level 25. After going out and making all these friends, I get rewarded with a level 25 Spiritomb. Uh, I rest my case, but this Pokemon honestly should totally get a Mega, and even if they made Diamond and Pearl remakes, oh my god, that would just be amazing if they could give this thing its debut as a Mega. Spiritomb would be perfect, uh, like the perfect Pokemon to get a Mega Evolution, because it, like anyone who ever played Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you know how hard it was. Barely anybody ever obtained them legitimately, and I think you can breed them, but I mean, either way, it's hard to obtain them normally in-game. And, you know, give this thing like an increased stats in like special defense, special attack, and HP, this thing would literally be a monster. Um, and both like, you know, oh, and my Skype's going off, that's just awesome. Um, but it would literally be like a special, like a specially defensive, special attacking monster. I don't know why you couldn't go wrong with that, and personally, in my opinion, I still love Spiritomb, he's definitely one of my top 10 best designs, because I think he's just such an interesting, amazing design, so I don't know why you wouldn't go with Spiritomb. Alright, the last time we got a good Ghost-type Mega, 
it got banned right away to Ubers. And if you're unfamiliar with what Pokemon I'm talking about, or what the term Uber is, well, I'll quickly explain that. I'm talking about Mega Gengar being banned to Ubers, and Ubers is a tier on the Smogon tier list that follows a certain community format, and basically has Pokemon divided into like different tiers ranging from OU, which is overused, to Uber being banned from any tiers that you uh, play below it, and Uber's like one of the top tiers, along with Anything Goes, which is basically like anything you want goes. I'm pretty sure to, I don't know if it works like where you can do it with Hackmons on Showdown, uh, but I know for a fact that Rayquaza was the reason why this tier was actually made because it doesn't need a Mega Stone to evolve. So imagine having a Life Orb Dragon Ascent. Oh my god, that would be ungodly damage. Like literally, that is crazy. I've never got the chance to use one, but I really want to. Um, and the only other good Ghost Mega we've got besides Gengar is Mega Banan, which is currently sitting in the RU tier, which is actually really used, by the way. Um, also, if you want to learn more information about the competitive side of Pokemon, go ahead and hit the red subscribe button below this video. Um, and that way you can stay updated for when I have a video up, properly um, explaining how you can go through the start of like learning how to competitive battle. And if you're a beginner, it'll help you, you know, get on your feet and just basically learn the um, the basics of the metagame. Uh, but that'll be out in a few weeks. If you want to check that out, like I said, feel free to subscribe to stay updated. As I was saying though, Bayonet, um, when a Mega evolves, it gets the ability Prankster, which is awesome because it allows you to use non-lethal moves such as Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, Calm Mind, Swords Dance, etc. Basically moves that just don't directly attack the opponent, but they do it on like a different turn or they uh, affect you like you're raising one of your stats. Similar to that, it's just stuff that doesn't do direct damage to the opponent. Basically making this thing like a Sableye in disguise, if we were to give it Prankster, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, except, I mean, not as good, like, at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close, dude. Um, but it's still a good setup, Pokemon. And if we got a Mega Miss Magius, uh, we would be introduced um, to like a whole new ability, uh, or sorry, not whole new ability, like a whole new way to run Miss Magius. Because I feel like this thing, although it's primarily a choice specs attacker, and you usually see it running like either three or four um, moves that are offensive, you go choice specs, or you do like leftovers or life orb and substitute. Um, but there could definitely be some better. Um, like you know I guess you could say like plays you can make with this Pokemon um, and different ways you can use it if it started getting the ability prankster and then you could use that on a substitute set I don't know something like that just something to keep in mind all right so this spot is actually tied in a two-way tie we have a tie between the galactic mascots being Honchkrow and Weavile I don't know if they're actually named that but that's what I found them to be and I just kind of nicknamed that Weavile mainly because he's Cyrus's ace Pokemon, and if you're not familiar with the 4th generation games Diamond Pearl Platinum, uh, Cyrus was the main antagonist and he ran the organization Team Galactic. Um, but he he has his ace Pokemon, which are both Honchkrow and Weavile. Now, assuming if it was anything uh, where they followed along with like Archie and um, Maxi, yes, that's, that's his name? Maxi, yeah. Um, they both got their ace Pokemon uh, Mega Evolutions, both Camerupt and... Sharpedo, so this could be like this game's like duo of like secondary mascot Pokemon, if you know what I mean by that. Because, um, like Camerupt and Groudon represent uh, Ruby, and then Sharpedo and Kyogre represent Sapphire in a way, if you think about it like that. Um, because they're like the secondary mascots, because they're what those teams use. So I figured that this would be a good idea for Weavile and Honchko to maybe both get a Mega Evolution or like one or the other, just because it's, you know, not only is it like a good mascot Pokemon for Team Galactic, but it's also Cyrus's ace Pokemon. So. I think it would be pretty interesting to see, like, you know, what they could do if they would give these things Mega Evolutions, both design and stat-wise, because I know they could both definitely use it, to be honest, it's a stat and boost for both of them, or stat and boost, hello, that's not even a word, increase would be pretty good for both of them. Honchko, this thing is literally begging for a Mega Evolution, if you ask me. You will not meet a bird as fancy as this mother trucker right here. Plus, Honchko's stats, like I said, aren't the greatest thing, but his typing is pretty good considering his weakness to fighting and bug are voided due to his flying subtype. And as far as I'm concerned, the only notable dark flying Pokemon we've ever had before is Mandibuzz. Besides that, this thing's typing is one of a kind. Now with Weavile on the other hand, give Mega Weavile a different shiny color, please. I can't stand it. The color scheme for shiny for shiny Weavile is just so bad. It's so bad. Like if you can change Dragonair's shiny sprite so drastically from a nice shiny purple to a baby vomit green when it evolves to Dragonite, please. Although Weavile looks like it's wearing a crown and gold jewelry, doesn't make it anything near royalty, please. Game Freak, if you're listening, change its shiny sprite to something different, please. Well, if we don't get a Mega Toxicroak, then this would be a nice supplement. 
Because let's be honest, the Mega Stone for Toxicroak would be something weird like the Toxicroak or something like that. That sounds like something you put in your car. Like, hey man, you got any spare Toxicroakonite? Yeah man, my car's running low. Here, I'll, I'll let you have some. I mean, Drapion is like one of the best typings in the game. Um, and only one weakness being ground type. Come on, yeah, I'm, I'm about it, I'm about it. Plus, with its only weakness being ground, like I said, we can safely assume that Ice Fang will be your best friend in this case. I mean, it's really about as good as Sableye and Spiritomb. Previously, before Gen 6, they didn't have any super effective weaknesses, meaning that if you somehow obtained a Pokemon with Wonder Guard, uh, being Sableye or Spiritomb, looks like you're not going to be dying anytime soon. Now, their only weakness is, is Fairy, because of the new Fairy typing being effective against Dark, it is kind of null voiding their typing, so now they do actually have one weakness, so that plan's kind of foiled. But it's nice to have, you know, one weakness, and plus, its entire level of moveset is good enough. I mean, who needs those fancy schmancy egg moves anyways? Are you kidding me? Not this Scorpion right here, man. He's just too badass to even care. The only downside to using one of these guys in an in-game playthrough is that you have to deal with uh, using Skarupi to level 40, which is not something that I would personally like enjoy doing because Skarupi's honestly not too amazing, but I mean, if you want to raise up to level 40, I, th I think that would be cool and it would be w totally worth it if you did. Um, but I feel like if this is gonna mega evolution, it would actually be more worth trading up this thing to evolve. Uh, I don't know, that's just my opinion, but if, if this thing got a mega evolution, I would definitely be a lot more, um, interested in getting this thing to, like, level 40 and evolving and using it on my in-game team. Toxicroak. <laughs> this Pokemon can honestly be very deadly. And I've even had many Wi-Fi battles turn sour in a matter of, like, three turns all because of this guy. Not only is Toxicroak a hard physical attacker, but he is also really, really fast. And this allows Toxicroak to be basically like a speedy ninja or a Greninja. No? Alright. Um. <laughs> now, granted, he does get a four times weakness to Psychic, and we aren't going to be focusing on his stats that much in this video or in, in this little section here. Um, I want to focus more on his design. Toxicroak's design is basically like um, the combination of a bullfrog and a human, which is pretty interesting. Um. And the only reason why I want this thing to get a Mega Evolution is because it's not a very commonly used Pokemon in most playthroughs that I've seen on YouTube, um, whether they be normal playthroughs or Nuzlocke or whatever. Um, and that makes me want it all that much more because Toxicroak is great if you don't have a nice physical attacker, but I wouldn't really suggest it if you don't have good Psychic type coverage. I mean, it's just personally my opinion on that. I'm obviously, you don't have to listen to me on that one, but um, I can definitely see this thing being a fantastic Pokemon if it got a Mega. Not that it already isn't, but hopefully it'll get like a better you know set of level up moves and a better design that would be pretty cool uh specifically the dark typing for uh, level up moves and i mean like i know this thing gets a sucker punch and all but i would feel much safer in a situation where i could get night slash out or like foul play and get an immediate attack off so that i don't risk letting the opponent set up like a calm mind or some kind of setup move um and i know this thing gets foul play via move tutor but i'm talking more specifically with its level up stats ah uh, lux ray i remember this dude Let's be honest, when we all first played through Diamond and Pearl, we never thought that this cute little blue cub could ever evolve into such a badass, like, electric... Lynx? I don't I don't know what this thing is, I've, I've always tried to Google what Luxray is, and I was having this debate last night, and I thought that it was a lion, and then a tiger, and then my buddy Matt pointed out that it was a lynx, because he Googled it, I don't know what this thing is, but we're gonna call it a lynx. Luxray is a Pokemon that I'm sure 90% of you most likely have used in a playthrough before. I never actually used this Pokemon in a playthrough of Diamond and Pearl um, before, but I wouldn't mind doing it if I ever replay through those games, wink wink. After a while, I've come to really expect, um, or really expect, hello, really respect Luxray as a Pokemon. After seeing, like, what kind of, uh, amazing stats it has, specifically in its attack stat, uh, its base attack is like 120, something crazy like that. And if you have all the right natures and EVs, etc. for this Pokemon, it's attacks that nearly hits 400 maxed out with a grand total of 372, which is freaking mind-blowing that a Pokemon that is one of the first Pokemon that you encounter in the game could be that powerful later on once you evolve it all the way to level 100. But the only stat that's nearly as high as that is its special attack being base 95, which don't get me wrong, any stat, uh, you know, over base 95 is pretty good in my opinion, but um, by looking at this thing's total stats, it's not at all the, that bad in most of its stats to be honest. But if you made this thing a Mega and gave it around base 150 to 170 attack, I'm not sure if that would be going for something a little bit too high, but something like that, and raised its speed to maybe base 90, uh, base 100 if you wanted to go that far. You could literally make this thing a fast, hard-hitting physical attacker and have access to all the elemental fangs as well. 
I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think that would be pretty suiting for a Mega, and I think that would definitely help this Pokemon out competitively and in-game as well, just with its overall, like, you know, base stats and move pool. I don't know, just my opinion. With Seraptor being the fortune equivalent to Swellow and Pidgey, one more needs to be said. This Pokemon has amazing base stats all across the board, and it gets access to moves that aren't even its type. <clears throat> Close combat. Oh, <laughs> how could I forget that move? Close combat. A badass bird Pokemon with crazy high attack and speed, and has the same typing as basically every other like starter bird Pokemon, and it's the physical attacking equivalent to Pidgeot, which already got a Mega Evolution uh, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Now, assuming the Pidgeot only got a Mega Evolution because it was an OG Pokemon, I mean, that would have to be the same kind of approach they would have if they want to make a remake of Diamond and Pearl. Staraptor deserves a Mega out of any of the Pokemon on this list, and that's why he's number one, because he has such, um, you know, like, like a similar typing to basically all the other bird Pokemon in the game, but he does get access to close combat and a couple of other really good moves, like Brave Bird and all that, that make this thing a physical attacking monster. Put a Choice Band or a Choice Scarf on this thing, maybe even a Life Orb if you wanted to. This thing is literally one of the best Pokemon in the metagame, um, and I'm pretty sure it's an OU, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't played OU in a very long time. But Staraptor, I always like using it whenever I can because it's actually a really, 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 really good Pokemon. And I I remember back in like the days of 4th Gen, it was always, always in the top tier, which I think was like OU back then. Uh, there's never a tier higher than OU, right? Uh, so getting back in the competitive scene of things, don't judge me, don't hate on me in the comments. But this has just been my opinion, so hopefully this didn't offend anyone. <laughs>